right, welcome back to the World Tellers Podcast. Brother Finn's going to lead us off with a question. Oh, that was quick. I thought you <laughs> Man, just going straight to it. I thought you had it. an intro, Brett. I that was, um, that is Brett's intro. And handoff. Um, <laughs> he didn't right, get so over half court before he dished that ball. <laughs> <laughs> like Jason Williams. He threw it from the baseline, just yeah. up into the court. Everybody remember Jason Williams? To the yeah. center. Yeah. yeah. White chocolate. Yeah. Jay Will. Yeah. Um, all right, so I think with the conversation, I'm going to start with the question, and this is what the topic is for the day and what our conversation will hopefully circle around and touch on, and um, I'm sure it'll take us some other places as well, but this is the question and the, uh, the question on top of the question. So, how does Christianity bring meaning and purpose to your life? Why would a non-believer want to be a Christian? And I was only starting by asking the question, so I'm going to open it up. I'm sorry, can you ask that one more time? I'll read it one more time. Okay. And we can touch back if we need to later. How does Christianity bring meaning and purpose to your life? Why would a non-believer want to be a Christian? I guess another way to ask that is, why does Christianity offer the answer to the question of what is the meaning of life, what is the purpose of life? And why does it answer it the best? Tracking, tracking. I think you should dish the ball back to Brett. Brett, what are your thoughts? Oh, wait, he's still back on the baseline. <laughs> I thought Jonathan was going to lead us off there. No. Um, <clears throat> I can't dribble. <laughs> he's just in the paint. <laughs> I think... Um, all right, so I'll start with Ecclesiastes 3, 11. Um says he has made everything appropriate in its time he has also set eternity in their heart and so i think our our design is to know god and be in relationship with him i think that's our ultimate purpose um and i think everything else so our for those of us who are in christ we have we have a hope um, we have a living hope now, but ultimately our hope is in the next, is in the next life. Um, so you're able to go through this life having that eternal mindset. And so when things come and trials come, you're able to deal with those things because you know that this isn't all there is. Um, so that's my short that's my short answer yeah yeah i'll I'll, i know i tend to get long-winded at times so i'll (laughs) thanks for cutting it off a little earlier 79 words in a row (laughs) (laughs) um a couple years ago i was on a kick of uh trying to get my health in line and i had done really well with that i lost a lot of weight and was running and, and enjoying that and it's a good thing um, I had also had some aspirations to, I, I had low goals in life, I guess will be the starting point here. So I, I think there's some people that like, Hey, they're never going to be satisfied unless they're like the top of the top of the top and whatever they do, they want to be the best basketball player, the best golfer, the best CEO, a fortune 500 company. And unless they're there, like there's always this target that they can aim for. My targets were pretty low. So it was pretty much like feeling somewhat financially secure having a house, having kids, having my health in line. Um, those were kind of some of the targets that I was aiming at. And I thought, like, if I could kind of hit these targets, I would kind of hit this threshold in life where it would be like, I'm good. Like, I got it. Now I can kind of just sit back and just kind of maintain from here and uh, live from this place of just fullness. And uh, praise the Lord that I had low targets. <laughs> uh, about two-plus years ago, I, I – Oh, I guess almost three years ago, I, I kind of hit those targets. Uh, my wife and I, we had had struggled with infertility. We ended up having our, our daughter Shiloh in 2019, and then soon after, we're pregnant with our son Uriah, who was born in 2020. Um, COVID started, and for us, it didn't affect my, our income, didn't affect life. 
in a in a financial standpoint if anything it kind of assisted us um it didn't hurt us and it also um from a it took a lot of requirements away expectations away we didn't have to go attend this or go to this thing it was kind of like life became simple which is great when you got a a young baby in the house and stuff and um so it kind of simplified life and once again i'd already been on about a year and a half kick of like focusing on my diet and that was like kind of really what i lived and breathed throughout the day like focusing on when i got get to do my workout in and you know looking up this new diet plan and all this kind of stuff and i was enjoying it it was all great and then I knew there was still something missing. I was about to say, enough about us. Let's talk about you, Joseph. Right? <laughs> yeah, well, okay. So then I, I, hit, a, I, I hit a wall. <laughs> and I'll just stop there. No, no. No, what I, what I came to realize is I had all those things, and things were great. And there's nothing wrong with each any of those individual things. They're all not bad things in and of themselves. But what I came to the realization of was this doesn't actually provide any genuine fulfillment in the ultimate sense there was still something completely missing and it took about a year of uh, really tough trials in life and the darkest spot that i've ever been in in my life personally to come to the realization that the only fulfillment and purpose and meaning um, that i could piece together was what was in front of me all along something i had professed all along which was my christian belief but it was something that i never really actually applied to any major areas in my life in a way where there's transformation and once uh not out of my own willpower but really out of a place of necessity and falling apart that i start to apply what i said i believed into areas of my life and i started to see meaning and fulfillment and purpose and that really genuinely came from growing in a relationship with who christ is and who he says i am in him so for me it was yeah i i reached what i thought was going to be good and it was good but it wasn't what i thought it was going to be yeah <clears throat> being being close how friend. many words was that uh <laughs> Close to a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> once I get to four digits, dude, then. I could write a paper. Yeah. No. no I think so we did. Chat, we chat GPT. Yeah. That's how you let I had to write a couple of kid stories. For um. Anyways. Was this before or after Chat GPT? <clears throat> this was with Chat. No, this was with Chat GPT. He GPT. had. I've done that. It, I've done write that. the stories. So yeah. So. I'm a published I, author, anyway, by the way. This is a side super tangent here. We'll come back to this next week. Yeah, yeah. No, so I call <laughs> I call Camden um Dr. Crumwell because <laughs> <laughs> she can take a single tortilla chip and spread it over a thousand square feet to where you're always stepping on it. And um because because all we do right now is feed and burp um William. I call him Mr. Belcher. And <laughs> So I had ChatGPT make a story of Dr. Cromwell and Detective Belcher. And anyway, it was, we'll save that for another day. But um, anyway. Oh, but yeah. so, so this is, but as you say that, what I'm thinking of is that whatever that wrote is probably more, and I'm not giving, I'm not saying this in judgment to you, but is a probably better well-written kid story than what you could write on your own, especially in that period of time, which is like a couple seconds, right? Well, so... Since, since we're staying on this, um, so I have the thing a final is, point. So. I, I, had, I had it write two stories, and it was cool to, that it just spit it right out. And it's amazing how fast it writes it. And it's like, oh, this is. But yes, so I had told Lauren, I was like, oh, one day it would be really cool if I wrote out a story and like made like an actual little child's book, not to sell or. Well, in my mind, it's like, oh yeah, this will be worth a billion dollars. But New York bestseller. But just to kind of like, <laughs> you know, have this and like, you could just find pictures instead of drawing your own. Anyway, but um, you could so have AI. I There's that AIs be, that draw pictures dude, now too. Dude, I'm so. waiting on it. Yeah. I've got. They, it's already need, done. You no, but he's waiting that. for it to show up on his Amazon, Amazon yeah. account. Yeah. Yeah. I'm buy. waiting for it to be so easy. I don't have to download it now. You need no talent at yeah. all. It just yeah, comes with the phone or initiative. You just have to have the ideas. Yeah. No. So. Within that, I it was like, oh, this is really cool. This is, you know, this just happened. And all I had to do was just type in Dr. Cromwell and Detective Belcher. And, um, but I sent it to my sister and she said the same thing. I was already thinking, she was like, huh, it just sounds like I've already heard the story. Hmm. And it was very much that where it's like, even though it is a story and at the end there's a little bit of a twist where Dr. Cromwell finds, you know, they're, they're looking for the missing necklace and they open up the picture and it's behind it, you know, whatever. It's like, 
does feel like you've already heard the story. And two, it just seems like both stories that wrote for me lacked heart or lacked something that was like, it was just a story. Yeah. Anyway, so, well, since you asked. No, no, I, I think that's one of the, I, I was thinking more from the perspective of uh, fulfillment. So the, it, you, you had an idea, you gave it to chat GPT, but that's not your story, right? Yeah. Right. And so there was no, when you saw the, uh, you saw the, the final product you weren't like oh man look at what i accomplished like look at what i put together like look at what i made it was like oh this is a cool little trick you know yeah. it, it made something real quick and easy and it was simple and it's definitely better than i could have done in two seconds that's for sure but there was no you didn't feel any like fulfillment or purpose in that there was emptiness on the back side of it anyway that yeah I, that was a nice little yeah. it, it did very much up there. it did very much feel like it was like oh this is yeah, I think a trick is the word. Maybe even just like a a counterfeit, really. A yeah, facade. counterfeit is the word. A little bit. Yeah, come on. Interesting we'll, that that we'll circle back. <laughs> yeah, um, and Holy Spirit's just leading us today, dude. Yeah, and and <laughs> all right. So <laughs> since we're already here, in contrast to that, especially when you had like, especially when we had like newborns in our arms, there's some books you open up and like you're almost about to cry, like three quarters of the way through. It's like, oh my. Gosh, especially the ones we were talking about, like how much God loves them and stuff like that. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing story. This is full of, it's the opposite. It's full of heart and it's full mm. of just mm. goodness to the point where you're like, it's moving you, especially with a little infant that you, you know, are just overflowing with love with. But, uh, which by the way, Josiah now has oh, yeah. two I didn't, shout know, out. I didn't know if we wanted to say anything or not. But, uh, it's, it's on there now. Shout out to my. Was it Mordecai and Ezekiel? <laughs> <laughs> Ezra Chamberlain. It's old and, and New Testament. Naomi Ruth were born on Sunday, June fourth. Amen. Yeah, oh, praise yeah. the Lord. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, which is cool because June fourth was the day we found out we were pregnant with our first. That was a miscarriage, and it was June fourth was also the day that we found out a year later that we were pregnant with our daughter Shiloh, and so. I don't know what to do with that. Uriah doesn't fall into that mix, but he was a surprise baby. So Uriah is just unique in a lot of different ways. So, <laughs> and from what I gather, it sounds like Naomi is doing really well. She's strong and determined. Yeah, Ezra's yeah. just kind of hanging on for the ride, which yeah. fits yeah. you and Chessa very much. Yeah. Well, they what they call it they they can't use a medical term for it, but they say it's wimpy white boy syndrome <laughs> with his lungs. <laughs> they say they say boys. J- they, so they were born at 34 and a half weeks and they're in the NICU right now they're doing well but it's just kind of like a process to get them up to speed and stuff and they're both doing great but Naomi my daughter has been just excelling and doing great and our son is doing fine he's doing exactly what he is expected to do but is like a day and a half behind where Naomi's at And but yeah they say that normally it's a, the boys that have a harder time when they first come out when they're born uh, premature to kind of get their bearings and stuff. But he was also, the, he was born almost a pound heavier, four pounds, 11 ounces, and she was three pounds, 14 ounces. So You're stealing everything in the womb, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they say because Naomi was probably having to fight for everything she got in there that she just came out kicking. So uh, so that wimpy white boy syndrome, can that last into your 30s? Um, well, ask, yeah, yeah. Asking for a friend. There was a lot of jokes. Yeah, yeah. I was like, well, yeah, the women in our family are tougher. And da, 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 da. No, I was talking about myself. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, for my friend. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Where are we at? Uh, back to Jonathan. You said you started to talk about yeah. how you saw me. Oh and yeah, then- talking about um, <clears throat> one from my perspective. You were you were crushing it, and I remember you were out on your treadmills a couple of times. Where like cause you were running, like trying to get up like a marathon length or whatever, like your dad and. I, I, I was over head. at your house a couple of times, and then you would go outside, and you're just, like, running on your treadmill for an hour, and I'm like, gosh, I feel so worthless. <laughs> You'd be hanging at the house. <laughs> the you can ride. come over, Jonathan, but I'll While be out my buddy's garage. just, like, crushing life. <laughs> it's like, um, you guys somebody's got, got goldfish? Got, somebody's got to use the couch. <laughs> Jonathan, just <laughs> sleeping on the couch with a bag of goldfish. Yeah, just crumbs <laughs> on my chest. Um, but anyway, and then, yeah, it was like, you kind of, I remember you were just, yeah, crushing it, and all of a sudden, it was sort of this... I don't know. From, from a from a side perspective, it was like all of a sudden it was all. It was like sudden. you just realized it was like, huh? I actually got all the things. And it's like in life, most of us never actually grasp the thing that we're shooting for, and so we spend our whole lives just chasing this thing we think is going to make us happy. Where you actually like had both in hand, 
or all that in hand and all of a sudden it was like huh i don't feel fulfilled and then it was like then it was like the next year was also hard to watch but for you know all of a sudden it was like man i wish my buddy was running the, <laughs> it was way cooler the on the treadmill and not just curled up in a ball crying <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but anyway so no but seriously he was curled up in a ball crying no i appreciate jonathan during that season he was always there to kind of i remember him calling me a lot of for a little period of there calling and praying with me and stuff and hmm. he, saw, he saw i was struggling so i appreciate your friendship in that i live my life a quarter mile at a time like vin diesel so i don't actually remember <laughs> but it was a very brief period of time it was like a three-day period you said you're gonna call me every night <laughs> oh that sounds right yeah okay but you, you called me when you needed to call me and when i needed it so yeah he meant every fifth night or sixth <laughs> night yeah Fan, do you have a story about me? And yeah, I, was I mean, I was, see, yeah. I, Brett and I just got back in the room. So Cy and Jonathan, luckily, have been able to carry it for us so Sorry, far. Sorry, dude. Uh, I, all right, so let me try to um, <laughs> please. Try I feel like I, I answered the in. question somewhat. No, you right? did, and, and no, and I think I think I've got eventually. some thoughts that might be able to tie it all together. So, yeah, I think that's a great point that most people do pursue life, like Jonathan just said seeking ultimate fulfillment, meaning, purpose, and things that are not the ultimate. They're not the eternity that's been placed in our heart that Brett mentioned originally, that there's that eternity-shaped hole in our heart that can only be met by an eternal being, in this case, as believers, God, and ultimately the person of Jesus Christ, whom we can have a relationship with. So we have that, as I believe every human being is born with that, that need, uh-huh. trying to find ultimate meaning and purpose in anything other than that leads to emptiness, dissatisfaction, getting to the peak and realizing, oh, is this really all that there is? You hear it all the time with celebrities and, and famous athletes that they've achieved the pinnacle of human success and it does not ultimately satisfy because from a Christian perspective, it's not what ultimately brings meaning and purpose to your life. It's just not. They're good things, but when out of their proper context, they can be destructive and become become bad things even. And to tie it into what you were talking about with chat GPT and then artificial intelligence and so on and so forth, like imagine a world which I guess further along we get, it's maybe not that hard to imagine, but imagine a world where human beings literally don't have to do anything for their own survival. Everything is taken care of from a practical standpoint, survival standpoint, from this artificial intelligence. You don't have to work, you don't have to earn money, you don't have to provide shelter, like it's just given to you. You just have all of that in abundance. Whatever you want, every need is met. So you're not going through life pursuing, I need this, I need that. You can, what what is left? What does it mean to be alive then at that point? I think that same question can be asked even before we're to that point in society. Does that make sense? So imagine the society where every person's need is met. They don't have to work. They don't have to achieve. They don't have to do anything. They can simulate any reality that they desire and want. They can just have it all. So there's no need to do all that. People just don't do that. They have it all. What is left then to provide meaning and purpose to somebody's life? And I think that same question can still be asked of the current situation that we all experience where you do need to work to earn money and so on and so forth. Because (coughs) even even now, you still can't find your ultimate meaning and purpose in work and money and success. Do you see what I'm saying? So like you can, those things are not what's ultimately going to satisfy anyways. So if you imagine that that futuristic society that we may never see, but just for the thought experiment's sake, what is left? What does it mean to be a human being? What gives meaning and purpose to life? For me, the question, or the answer to the question is, how does Christianity, I think it's so simple that we overlook it, and then we neglect it, and then we don't focus on it, and we don't think about that. It's not the forefront of our mind day to day, but it's so simple. It's, It's to love God, to to pursue and have a relationship with the eternal, the the being that is beyond our comprehension. We'll never fully understand him. We'll never have, but it's what our heart 
desires deepest. And then, so it's to love God and then to love people. It's, it's all about relationship. It's that's, that's the ultimate meaning and purpose of life is relationship. Mm -hmm. And apart from there being an eternal being that we can have that relationship that will never disappear, will never go away. If everything just ends in the heat death of the universe, even relationship becomes meaningless because it might be momentarily great, but given enough time, it is just going to disappear completely. So there's got to be that eternal grounding, I believe, that Christianity provides in the person of Christ and, and God the Father and the Trinity that is is paramount and important to the deeper meaning and purpose of life, which is, in my, my opinion, to simply put relationship. It's relationship with God, it's loving God, and then loving people. And everything else can be stripped away. So you can still have that. Re so imagine the society I described, that thought experiment in the future where every need is met. You can still find deep meaning and purpose in life through relationship, which is still the same exact way we need to find deep meaning and purpose in life now, in the here and now, exactly the way the world exists. It, it doesn't matter what you've achieved in life, like people on their deathbed are always going to point to family, friends, relationship, period. Like that is the deepest meaning. Imagine experiencing life and there's nobody there to share it with. It doesn't matter how successful you are. It's, it's meaningless if you're by yourself like that. That's hell. Um, I think the opposite of that is deep, intimate relationship with friends, family, and then ultimately God. Um, Man, we, yeah. Yeah. Dude, I want to love the thought experiment. Um, I love just the, uh, and I, I don't, I mean, who knows, man? We might not be that far off from there. Um, but um, I don't know. My my first thought goes to like like my first thought when you were, you know, kind of painting that picture was, I feel like living in that society would magnify and make it very obvious that you know that there's something more that I need to grasp or there's something more because it's like, okay, well, I, how can I find, there's nothing that's people fulfilling get side me anymore. That's what I'm saying. I think it's right. still true now, even now, but you right. can hide it behind mm. I was, just being busy. My job is where I find my meaning. I yeah. was going to say. The money I, I make is where I find my the, meaning. The but. thing that I've been thinking about lately is a distraction. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the enemy uses it. I think we do it on our own as we get distracted by the things that take up our time during the day, whether that be work, whether that be our hobbies, whatever it could be. But distraction, I think, is a very big, a very big problem. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, that's like my first thought is that where it's like, okay, well, if there's all these less distractions, and it's like now I have all this more time, I have all this extra time on my hand compared to what it used to be, or just a generation ago. <clears throat> then now all of a sudden it's like, okay, the the point in the fulfillment of knowing God and pursuing Christianity and to know more about it. And like, well, Hey, what are these guys talking about? Why are these people giving their lives or, you know, like it would magnify the importance of it where, but the thing is, I feel like there's all because of the cosmic war, there's always, I think it's going to, you know, it could very easily just be the opposite where it's like, I'm so distracted by media at this point, instead of whatever, that once again, I'm still just as lost and I'm still just searching in all these black holes even more than ever and farther from the truth than ever mm -hmm. because I'm just, because the media keeps telling me, oh, well, if you just have this or if you just, you know, even if it's just games at that point, if, you, if you're the best at this game or I think of Ready Player One and you know what I mean? It's like, it's one thing to have your needs met. It's another thing to have a surplus. Oh, and there's just always going to be that, like clawing for more and more and more. The, the distraction will always be there, I think, of gaining an advantage over your neighbor anyway. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like on one hand, it's you know, both of those thoughts just kind of came full circle as you were talking, which I think is really well, interesting. You but. can kind of ask yourself, like, if I had everything that the world has to offer in abundance at the tip of my fingers, whenever, like, right. would I really be happy? And I think... Yeah. Anyways, I, I, I think the answer is no, because that's not where ultimate meaning is found. I, I think another thing that um, deep meaning and purpose are found, especially on this side of eternity, that we we can count it as um, 
the worst of all things, or we can look at it as an opportunity for growth and uh, count it all joy right. is the suffering. Uh-huh. And it's because that's going to happen. <clears throat> suffering is a guarantee. Death is a guarantee. Those are two things that are guarantees in life for every human being that's ever born into the world, suffering and then ultimately death, period. It's going to happen on some level at some point, end of story. And it's the, it's like embrace, like facing that forthrightly and confidently because as believers, we have something beyond this world that we place our hope in, that we're trusting in, that we can confidently step forward and face those sufferings and, and death and evil and destruction in the world because there's not a great story out there that does not have conflict and suffering in it. Those are the best stories. Right, the tragedy. The and and it, you always want to be the person that faces those things bravely and confidently like the hero. And we can do that as believers if we're rooted and grounded in the truth and the hope and the joy that comes from Christ. Rooted and grounded in Christ, ultimately. And it's like, that's a radically deep, meaningful story that we can all live out in our own lives now and experience and, and count it as blessing that we're allowed, we're able to do that on this side of eternity and in such a way that, that maybe offers deep meaning and purpose to other people's lives. And, um, dude, yeah, yeah, that's good. It's, it's that that kind of leads into your the second part of your question. So let's, <coughs> somebody's got quote unquote a good life, but you know, they're, they're doing well in business. They're, you know, they've got a happy marriage, but they're not a Christian. Why would that? Why would that person want to be a Christian? I, I do think you have to start from a perspective because most people in that moment, in a snapshot of time, would say, "Well, things are good. Like I'm good." And I don't know if people. Yeah, I feel like you just got to be like, "All right, well, what is the long term outcome?" Kind of talking about what Fen says, and maybe it's just because I, I, I think I have a natural nihilistic tendency where it's like I can see that apart from God that like Fen said the things guaranteed in life is life suffering is and death ultimately <laughs> meaningless apart from God right so it's almost how do I get somebody not to like belittle their circumstances because it's like hey those are blessings those aren't I don't want to undermine the you got a, a you got a loving family and a and a home that is you know you guys are you and your wife are a team and you love each other that's great and you got a, a job that's awesome like you don't want to undermine those things but it, you do kind of want to say like well let's look, just look at this long term uh we had a conversation with a buddy a couple of weeks ago that we had went to high school with and we're sitting there and we're all in our mid-30s now it's like man i remember when we were teenagers when we were like 14 15 16 like doing wild stupid things we're now in our mid-30s with kids families like time flies by right and hey we're over a third of our life through if, if we're live a full life right and so it's like how do you get them to kind of think long term and say okay is is this the best there is i think if somebody realized like as christians we're called to be sojourners here right this is not our permit we're for we're we're strangers in a foreign land right and the more we have that realization the more we can live open-handed and freely mm. the more we can love one another as opposed to if we see that this life is it I think we kind of had this like holding on with like clenched fist mentality where it's like, I got to, I got to get this thing. This I, It's all about almost self-fulfillment because this is all we got. And as Christians, we should be living more of like, I'm just here for a wisp and a vapor. I'm going to be gone and I'm going to be going to something that's way beyond anything I can comprehend here from a, a joy and fulfillment perspective. And so almost getting them to kind of like see past their momentary thing I think there's in our society, there's a lot of people. It's like I just want to live in the moment. I don't even want to think about that up there. I got so many, and I have so many distractions where I don't ever have to think about the thing mm. out there. I got so many things that I can do right now that provides momentary happiness. And in the moment, I start to feel that emptiness on the backside. I can just find another thing that, that will ex- prov- existential right. angst. About right, the right. deeper questions, but, but it's like to, you almost need to get somebody into that perspective. They have to get like you had. Like right. your, your experience in your life rocked you to the core that you like had to, you were confronted with those questions in a real way. And I was so grateful for the fact that I had a foundation <laughs> that was there. Mm-hmm. I knew all the answers. It was just, Josiah, you never, you've not applied it at all in so many areas of your life. The answer 
you've you've held these propositional truth statements out here in the ether and you've uh, taken little snippets here and there but like as a whole you've not entered into the relationship with jesus that you've spoken of and taught uh, you you know all the stuff where it's like i could give you the right answers to the test but i don't know him in the way that he wants to know never partook yeah of the divine nature. Yeah, so. well, it's almost like I'm envisioning like there's a suit of armor just sitting there, and you're just admiring the suit of armor, but you've never actually put it on and like realized its usefulness and like how it actually, um, how it fits on you. And anyway, uh, but even as you're saying that, it's like there's a, such a simple message within that that's for someone who is for someone who doesn't have that perspective of I'm just a sojourner here, and I'm just I just I, on one hand, it's like, I just need what I need to be able to, you know, we just have our necessities to be able to survive as a human being here while we're here. And, but once we have that, then we can spend the rest of our lives in relationship and serving the kingdom. And you know what I mean? It just opens up all of a sudden this, all this other time that's just free to like actually live. Whereas if you don't have that mindset, it's like nothing is ever enough. I need to fill that time with more work. I need to be able to, you know, I'm, I'm falling behind. And it's like, there's the necessity base level. And then there's like, but what if, but what if I had a billion dollars? I could just buy all this cool stuff. That, you know, and there's always going to be right. something else you can't afford. Well, and you see a, t- a ton of people that kind of make it to the pinnacle. And I don't, I know there's a lot of like conspiracy theories about like Bill Gates and all that. But like they, they're full of philanthropists. This. What's, what's Philanthropist. Yeah, that word. Man, I always choose words that I can't say. Philanthropist. <laughs> I need to do the practice before, like Jonathan, the tongue tied to to the doc, um, whatever. Uh, but like they 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 give out more money than I'll ever make in a lifetime on like a daily basis. Like they give out, and there's an aspect where it's like I think these people reach these pinnacles and they realize like I have all this accumulation of wealth, and then they want to do well for society. So what I don't want to say is if you're not a Christian, you can't have this heart where it's like i want to help others i want to be in relationship with others what i think that indicates though is if you start to peel it back it's like what is that rooted and grounded in because if if there is no ultimate if there's no god if there is no eternity if there is no nothing beyond this then it is in the ultimate sense still just as meaningless as just getting yours and doing whatever you want with it in this lifetime and so but you you see that tendency where it's like you get it all and you see these people that you know you see people commit suicide and stuff and then you see these people it's like now they devote their lives to trying to you know take the wealth that they accumulated and help others with it which is great i'm not trying to undermine that but then you start to what is that rooted and grounded in in the ultimate sense um well on some level too it's like okay i've had all this money i've tried everything that was selfish and that didn't work so now i'm going to try to turn that turn that around for find fulfillment in this <laughs> but even within that that can also be empty if it's without uh, mm-hmm. purpose or if it's without eternal purpose i think yeah um, and ultimately i think relationship with i think they're finding relationship with others but they're right? not finding relationship good. With, with god right because yeah. it, it says like john seventeen three, eternal life is to know god and to know jesus christ who he sent but then in first john it says like how can you love god who you cannot see if you don't love your brother who you can see and so there's this dual aspect just like love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. The fulfillment of the law and the commands are all summed up in that. And it's like kind of, it is super simple, right? But I do think it has to come from a sense of relationship. It, unless, it, unless it starts with the relationship with me and God through the person of Jesus Christ, then I'm trying to now still come from a place of need to love somebody else as opposed to a place of fullness because I'm being loved and in a love relationship with my creator, God. Mm. Yeah. What do you think, Brett? I'm trying to hold not... on the ball. All right, so you're open in the corner. <clears throat> they forgot about you. <laughs> it's been a while since I've heard your silky voice there, sir. Um, in there, Brett. I think the starting point has to be that people need to understand that they need a savior. Not to go fire and brimstone type, but it says in John three thirty six. It says, the one who believes in the Son has eternal life, but the one who does not obey the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. And so, 
having people to understand that they have they have a sin nature that has to be dealt with right like you can i can talk about you know fulfillment and all that and all that's true and all that but the foundation of the gospel and understanding that if if someone doesn't know that they need a savior then they'll never truly turn to Christ I don't believe um, it's like if you go to if you go to the doctor and the doctor is like all right I got this medicine for you and you're like oh I don't I'm not taking that medicine because they don't know they have a disease but you have to tell them that they have a disease first that needs to be treated and so I think that's the and it's and it's you have to do it in a loving way but having people understand that they're the root cause of everything is sin and sin nature. Um, I think that has to be the foundation of everything, and then everything is built upon that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I, I think that is the truth. It's like how to get somebody. I think as we've gotten older, maybe you could fake it when you're younger, but I think if you, if anybody takes an honest look at themselves, they realize how messed up they are, right? I, I don't think I don't think that's a yeah. tough sell. I think it's for somebody to admit that, and yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah. a matter of pride. So I, I do think there's a recognition of like, look, you're a sinner, and there's nothing you can do to attain. Even if you ask a person like, give me give me your list, your your ten commandments personally, can you about live up what to your you own? you can't even live up to your own list of demands that you what your you moral code others? that you place on other people right. all the time that you judge their behavior on. You yourself have not lived up to that. And you, you know that. You can tell you me one that. way, yes. but you know. And right. deep down, they, they do know that. And then it's like, okay, how do I get out of this situation that I'm in? And, and Christianity provides the beautiful answer that it's, it's by faith alone in Christ alone. And that you receive forgiveness by placing your faith in Him. Because you have, to, you, you have to admit that I do have this disease that I'm incapable of curing. I have don't have the answer to it. That's the thing about Christianity that I think is so cool that because it's so true, you find pointers to it all over the place. Like, why can't I find deep meaning and purpose in work and money and success? Well, because it's not ultimately the purpose. Why do I always feel like I'm not quite, something's wrong with me that I'm, I'm not living up? Oh, because it's, it's your sin nature and you need a savior. It's like everything that you can look at in the world it points ultimately, in my opinion, to Christ and Christianity and the truth of it, the validity of it. And anything else is a less satisfying answer to any of life's deepest questions. It just doesn't provide as deep, as satisfying, as beautiful an answer to those questions as Christianity and Christ does. And, well, just throw this in there. I mean, King Solomon, the wisest man, you know, Whoever lived tried to save you some time. He wrote Ecclesiastes, <laughs> probably in a low point in his life. But it was like, man, it's like, look, I've, I had everything. I tried everything. If you just took that to heart, let me save you some time. Yeah, yeah, it's like, dude, oh my goodness. I gotta, I gotta read it because that's what. Uh, so, oh, oh man, it's gonna be he- scripture heavy, guys. You about to read Ecclesiastes? Well, he had brought it up earlier, so oh, it okay. kind of. I was like, I feel like this. But then when he touched on that, I'd been sitting in. A, Uh, Ecclesiastes 1, but it says, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What does man gain from all his labor at which he toils under the sun? Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises and the sun sets and hurries back to where it rises. The wind blows to the south and turns to the north. Round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, there they return again. All things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is fill, nor the ear its fill of hearing. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one can say, look, there's something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. There is no remembrance of men of old, and even those who are yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow. 
And then he continues on about meaningless. And once again, if you know who the person of King Solomon, he, he's <laughs> from a, a Christian perspective viewed as the, the richest and the most wise person that ever walked the earth. Now, once again, somebody who could fight that, but from a Christian perspective, that is kind of what the, the Bible teaches. Wisdom and the fulfillment of every worldly thing was given to him from a, uh, from a richest standpoint. And he's in the spot where it's like, this is meaningless. This is literally pointless. And you can read all Ecclesiastes and you come to the end of it and he says, what is the purpose of man? To fear God and to follow his commands. And I, I always try to translate into what that looks like in a New Testament perspective. And it goes back to to love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and to love one another as mm. yourself. Because that is the summation of the command, right? Yeah. And uh, well, I'll say do there. Man, that... But that- yeah. Basically, just said everything we've been trying to say poorly. And like, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I, I still had one more beautiful. weak life example. Go ahead. No, go, go, go. go. I mean, just... After the fact. No, no. Um, well, one, one, I think, you know, if someone's going to argue against, oh, Solomon, you know, well, that's Bible stuff, or whatever. It's like, dude, read the Proverbs for a man to be able to write down page after page of truths and applicable, 100% applicable things to your life that transcend thousands of years, it's like, okay, well, why don't you try that and we'll check it in 2,000 years and see where your wisdom level was. You know what I'm saying? Right, it's like, right. um, But anyway, that's just kind of validating. When I read the Proverbs, it's like, man, it is what it is. Like, I'm reading this. It right. Written. 2,500 years right. ago, and yet it still feels like this Completely is... Completely like, applicable to like life today. It's like he's talking today. to me and telling me how to... Right, it's like, man, if I could to apply look out for today, right? Like, I could apply one of these things today, I would be doing better, right? And the fact that there's exactly enough chapters, make sure you have one to read every day, anyway. Um, but I, Jonathan, sale pitch on the book of Proverbs, yeah, guys. Look, I will <laughs> give me a two minute elevator pitch yeah, on Proverbs for, for $5.99 a month. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I will tell you exactly where to read all this. Uh, has anybody heard it? Uh, I don't want to go off on tangent, no, it's a, tangent pop, pop off. Some dude, I was in the hospital. Peter Paul. Oh my gosh, dude! It made me like sick to my stomach. So this is where people are like, I don't want anything to do with Christianity. So we're watching, we're watching something on TV, and it's like a a one eight hundred infomercial comes on. It's like buy this miracle water, and you will be like blessed. And then they show like these people like I bought this miracle water, and I got three thousand dollar check in the mail. And then there's like four other people saying the same thing. And then he comes on, he's like, yeah, get it today for da da da. And he's like, and we'll and I promise you'll be blessed and. I'm like, this guy's going to have to face the creator guy of the universe yes. with whatever yeah. he's selling over here. There is a handful of people like the TV. And I do like, at least one guy. I can't remember. What, I don't think it was Peter Popoff, but same with. I, I don't want to. At first, I, I was I like, don't put this a target is a, on my back anyway by putting this out in the. By putting this out in the. But like, there are some people I've seen doing things like that that it's like you look in their eyes, man. It's like, ah. That looks like a demon to me, man. It's yeah. just like, how could, and I, at some point, it's like, how could you be doing this to people and that not affect you on the chorus level? But anyway, right. that's neither here nor yeah. there. But, um, so, yeah. meaning is not found in televangelism well, through selling miracle water? I, I think this, <laughs> this does well, kind of tie in. So, I think a pushback a lot of non believers have is like, look at all the horrible things Christians have yeah. done. And once again, there's another side of that where it's like, look at all the amazing things it, it, that And I can did. see that too. My answer to that is like, yeah, I don't think that's actually f- what those quote unquote Christians were doing was not actually in line with the truth. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And yeah. so I always have to say, like, if you read the Gospels of Jesus and his life and you had an honest viewpoint of it without already coming with all your biases, you would say, I would follow this guy. This dude literally was the most humble servant leader. Yeah. The idea of like the epitome of just like, it's not about me. It's not about me coming in with this high pedestal. It's like to 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 lead, you must you must serve. And as he's washing his disciples' feet, be, knowing that he's about to go be crucified, that's the kind of leader that we see as God incarnate. Like that's a deep, meaningful, form. purposeful but, life. Yeah, that's yeah, humble, that's just it. humble. Like the this is God, and he was born in a stable. I heard someone saying at one point, like, well, I think it was um, Jim White at uh, uh, East Mech? Mecklenburg, East, Mecklenburg yeah. Community Church. But he was saying that um, this is another tangent. I'm sorry. But, like, if you're looking at the life of Jesus, either either he's telling the truth about who he is. Like, there's only three options, like, if you're a non-believer. Either he's telling the truth about who he Lord, is. Lord, lunatic, or liar. Yeah. 
Lord, Lord Lunatic or Liar. And that's the thing. One of the things he mentioned that stuck with me, too. It's like most people who are liars or even lunatics, they're only liars or lunatics until it comes to when it doesn't serve them anymore. So if you're about to die for what you're saying and they're giving you options to cop out and be like, no, actually, OK, look, I was just kidding. I'm sorry. Like Pilot was trying to give him the door and then to still stick with that. It's like all of a sudden it's like that doesn't fit because someone looking out for themselves stops there and looks out for themselves. And right. Um, right. anyway, but so I, dude, <clears throat> as far as this topic goes, which the original topic of I'll read the question. One more yes. Time. Sorry. Just, those, just for real the space quick. cadets. Yeah. Real quick. So real, I, real quick. Real quick. Um, I also think that non-believers think that Christians are having faith without, without any type of evidence. And I don't think that's the case. No. Um, there's, there's out, you know, outside of the Bible, there's a ton of other historical documents that are right in line with, with the Bible. And then if you just look at scripture, there was over 300 prophecies fulfilled it, in scripture. And so I think it's very important to point out the fact that we're not just some group of people who are just having like a blind faith in something. Right. Um, it's like, no, there's, there's historical evidence. Yeah. This is um, the most logical. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Cause and the one thing that I always do with that question is you, you cannot, and for anybody listening that's not a believer, it's like, well, I just don't, I just don't buy that stuff. I always challenge them to say, what are you, what is your grounding that you're, what is your ground that you're standing on that you're over here judging Christianity from? Evaluate your own standing. What do you believe in? Yep. What is your faith placed in? Because it's something, it is something. You cannot be 100% neutral because even that neutrality in and of itself is a stance. Yep. Do you see what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. and, and I would argue, I am a believer, so therefore you know where I stand, what ground I place my faith in. There's any other ground apart from Christ is less firm, less satisfying, less explanatory value, all of those things than Christianity. And not only is there good evidence for Christianity, Every other perspective, any other grounding you can stand on, in my opinion, has less of all those things and leaves you on more of a shaky foundation. Because you, you're, it's not a neutral place. Like, I'm just judging Christianity. Here's the flaws in it. It's like, no, no, you have to be judging it from some perspective. Mm-hmm. And that perspective in and of itself is also a faith-based assumption about the nature of reality. You can't judge yeah. Christianity from any other place than another faith-based assumption. E- even, I think a lot of people in our circle or probably more in this, they're not like a staunch atheist or whatever. It's like, they're kind of this agnostic, but even that, that is, that sounds like humble. It's like, well, who, who, how, who am I to be able to like everybody each their own. And it's like, but that's a truth statement in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not, we can't know so that you're making a statement that we cannot know this, anything we can't, if there is a God out there, we can't know them. It's not knowable in this lifetime or, Hey, if you believe in this and you believe in that, then that's okay to each their own. It's like, well, but my truth claim is stating that I believe that this is the only, the way the truth and the life is only found in Jesus. So by me making that statement and you saying that, well, you can, I'm good with that, and I'm good with this. You, you're immediately throwing me out, even though you're kind of patting me on the back as you do it. Um, so, 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 yeah, I, I do think, though, it comes back to distractions, though, because I do think there's a ton of people. Mm-hmm. I've had conversations with people about stuff like this. Like, man, I don't even like talk. It makes me uncomfortable. Like, I don't like thinking about that kind of stuff. It's like, like, explore that, though. Explore why does that make you so right. uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and because Follow we that will thread. face face. The, at the end at some point, right? I was going to say, you made, a, you made a statement earlier. It's like talking about the dude selling the miracle water, but he's going to have to face God one day. Right. All of us at some are. Point, I don't that's know going that, to be the most point, important moment of your existence, yeah, whether I, you want to believe it or not. Yeah, no. I can't imagine he genuinely thinks what he's doing is for the kingdom. And if he does, then I'm, you know... I, just, I, should, I wonder if there's some point where it's like, you just like Judas over. or like like yeah. Satan, where it's like, I know the truth, but I would just, and even still, I would just rather 
live it up right now. I don't well, know. I, mean, I don't know if that. Read, I don't know. I, I don't want to assume. If you read thought. Romans one, it's like, man, there's these people who knew they know the truth about God, and yet they suppress the truth. They suppress the truth, and they keep pursuing the things, the evil things of the world. It says eventually God will give them over to their desires. Yeah. Right. Well, it, Romans 1 is a truth Let claim against agnosticism because it pretty much says that God is knowable by creation. But the, the more we push that and ignore it, the more we are given over to a dark mindset and the, more we, the, the less clear we can see that original viewpoint of the creation and the God, the creator within the creation. Yeah, uh, when you're saying that, I'll just imagine someone where it's like when someone's saying something that's true or hurtful and you got you got your ears in your your hands in your ears, your fingers in your ears, and you're like, mm -hmm. and then eventually, by the time you stop, the voice, you can't, the voice has stopped too. You know what I mean? Amen. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the visual I was just, but, um, one, since we are talking about this in terms of like, um, validation of Christianity as well, there's a quote by Charles Spurgeon, which was, um, I usually find the greatest doubters are the people who do not read the Bible. And I, even in my own life, it's like, yeah. But um, anyway, I just want to throw that in there. But I would say there's a lot of people who know the Bible, too, that are pretty staunch atheists. Yeah. So I think there's – but I would agree. I think there's the, the knowing, the head knowledge knowing, and that can get you only so far. It's the heart Transforma transformation knowing and I think the once again we throw the baby out with the bath water because like well these Christians are hypocrites in this area and or look at the crusades look at the inquisition like look at these things so therefore we're throwing and it's like once again it's like let's go back to the foundation which is what Christ Jesus so like it says in first Corinthians like that is the foundation and then it, it, depending on if we're building upon Jesus those things will either burn up in the fire on the on the day of judgment or they'll they'll be eternal and it's all dependent on if we're building up with things of this world or we're building up with Christ. I would throw in there, once again, the, the quote is, I usually find that the greatest doubters are the people who, who do not read the Bible. I think a lot of people who know doctrine and who get their scripture or they, they get their understanding of who God is from another voice or from a pod, whatever, a podcast, uh, oh, dude, there goes all of you. Like, the podcasts are okay, right? No, just, just absolutely this not. Just well, this one. As, a, as a supplement, yes, right? I can take a supplement dude, to I improve like my yes. life. That's good. But I still have to eat food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Yeah, I and, think there are a lot of people who get their knowledge of the Bible or God from, from what they've heard from somebody else. Right, or people who maybe have read. He says those who do not read. Those who maybe have read the Bible at some point, well, yeah, 20 years ago I was into all that. And actually this kind of brings me to what I've been kind of wanting to share just sort of a, in my own life. But um, Is that okay with Josiah? Yeah. If okay. As long as it ties me in somewhere along the story. <laughs> yeah, it probably won't. So all right, then just, <laughs> let's just cut it off. No, um, we were volunteering at the – for the shoes uh, at one point. I was talking to a guy and I was kind of, I was kind of witness. I don't know. I was just talking about what's going on in our lives and what we're doing with the shoes. And it came up where I was kind of trying to like witness a little bit to him, I guess, and talk about God. And um, anyway, he was like, yeah, I used to, you know, I've, you know, I've, I was into that kind of a couple times before, but it seemed like it just never really lasted for me. I would like be really into the church and really into whatever. And then it would just kind of fade away. And I was like, Oh my gosh. It sounded depressing when he said it, but, and that was the end of the conversation. Um, I will say, in my own life as of late, we have a newborn, and I'm, I'm not making excuses. I'm not saying it's right, because it's not, it's not in terms of fulfillment in my life, but I was coming off of a season of, um, Camden had gotten to a point where it was taking less time out of our day to kind of just, you know, keep her alive. <laughs> and occupied, you know. Um, but really, man, and I'm going to El Salvador and all that, just coming out of a season and closer to the point where we first started this podcast where it was like just I was just in the word all a lot, you know. And a lot of that and having a lot of time where the Lord is like meeting me in the pages and meeting me in the scripture and showing me how that applies on a real level and in my heart. And, um, and I miss that. And it's, it's almost like I've just sort of let myself, 
you know, with Lauren working a few days a week, when I'm at home with the kids a few days a week, it's just been hard to kind of grasp, like, just kind of get a grip. So on some level, one, it's been harder and harder to find time, just quality time to read. Not that it's not there. I'm just not taking advantage of it. I'm just letting myself be distracted. And so goal number one, let me back up, is, like, I know, like, that's my goal is to get back there because that's the most fulfilled I've ever felt was just like being in the word and just the sweetness and just the you know where it starts to become bread and it's like man i like i, I haven't read today I'm, and i gotta get in there and, hungry and, hungry yeah and, and reading utmost and you know the things that kind of supplement with that and it's like but over the last couple of months the season we're in man I, i've just allowed that to kind of stop i saw more this morning i'm like i haven't <laughs> like i haven't been in the word like at, at all you know what i mean it's just things online i'm reading and there's I'm listening to, but not actually in, um, anyway. So, and I can feel it, but the point of, you know, how this wraps back to our topic is, especially at night when I'm praying and during the day, it's like, and I was mentioning this before the podcast, before we started recording, it's like, man, when I'm praying, those scriptures are still there and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm talking to God and like these scriptures just keep coming in here and here and here. And it's just like, he's right there. He hasn't gone anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere. And our relationship is still good. I'm still a child of God. I'm still, and it's like, like I haven't lost, like I've lost, I've lost some enjoyment in, in pursuing, you know, the word of God and, 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 and growth. You know what I mean? And so that there's something there, but in terms of like, but it's not like I've fallen down a hill. Um, and it's like now when I'm praying, it's just like, man, and I'm just realizing more and more that I have, that who he is and who I am in him, it's just like that hasn't changed and won't change. And the scripture that comes to mind is um, Matthew 28, the you know, the very last verse in Matthew, um, when he's talking about what the Great Commission. And the second part of verse 20 is, um, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And as of late when I'm praying, that's been coming to my mind where it's like, I'm with you always. And it's like, I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, I'm sorry, I haven't been reading, I haven't been, you know, and it's just like, boom, that comes into mind. It's like, I'm with you always. It's like, I'm right here. You're fine, you know, and um, and praise the Lord, man. And because of that, it's like, you know, I haven't gotten down on myself because it's like, it's hard to, like I said, get a grip when our schedule's flipping back and forth. And some days it's like, he's crying all day. And, you know, and then trying to like pick up speed the next day after it's been three days with them and then trying to like, okay, where was I? You know what I mean? As far as work goes and stuff like that. And, um, and letting that kind of like affect like how I see myself, but within that, just praying. And every time God's like, no, you're okay. I'm right here. We're good. And it's like, I don't know. I've just, I've really been experienced, like experiencing just a high level of joy of the last week or two where it's like, I've stopped getting down on myself for those things. Because every time I talk to God, every time I pray, and it's just like, no, we're okay, and the scriptures are still there, and it's so it's not like, it's not like shoveling back the ocean where it's like, oh, as long as I'm reading, then me and God are good. And for a long time in my life, it was like that, where it's like, if I wasn't going to church, if I wasn't plugged in, if I wasn't whatever, it's like, oh, I don't even feel like a Christian anymore. Um, Am I a Christian? Right, and it's like, yeah, you're realizing that your relationship with the Lord has nothing to do. With your performance, yeah, you man. are not for the first as good life. as you are. Your relationship with God is not a direct reflection of your performance. Your performance should be an outflowing of your direct relationship with God that is on the basis of faith and God's grace alone. And you'll find that you'll want to spend time in the Word and spend time with the Lord when you realize that, oh my gosh, I'm fully accepted yeah. by I, the I, eternal, uncaused being creator of the universe that loves me and died on the cross for me it's like blows yeah. your mind and you're like man i'm a child of god this is awesome and yeah. th- th- that draw is there and i feel that draw and but what i'm starting to realize now is it's like to, but to apologize to god for that or and that's the thing too is even when i'm asking for forgiveness it's like you're already forgiven it's and all that is just coming through the scripture and it's just like oh you've already you're already forgiven and it's like but to apologize for not taking advantage of the gift doesn't make a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's almost just like, let me try to, it's like, I'm like, Lord, oh, no, I should be reading. I should be this. And he's like, he's just like, don't, you know, like there's time for that. And there's, you know what I mean? But that that's growth. That's like, that's a gift. And when you're, you know, 
when you're ready to take that, then you will. Anyway, I don't know. It's just I've been experiencing a high level of peace. And so when I with the topic today of you know how does Christianity bring meaning and hope and fulfillment to your life, it's like man, for the first time ever, I'm actually experiencing in what I guess I would call like a a dry season in my walk, just because of everything else going on. Um, with kids and stuff like that, it's like even then, for the first time, it's like, man, I, you know, God is good, and I'm a child of God, you know. So. Foundation. <clears throat> Enough about you guys. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Amen. Good. The closing hope. thoughts. Hope. That's what he was saying. Hope. Uh, just anyway. Hope. We have a hope. A hope that goes beyond this world. A hope that. And assurance. Yeah. You know. A foundation that our hope is built upon, Amen. a cornerstone, an anchor in the storm. And nothing can change it. Right. Even when we fall short, yep. there's something still firmer. Praise the Lord. And it's not it's not an out-of-this-world notion. It's like when I was in college, I went from talking to my parents 10 times every day to sometimes once a week, but I was still their son. Right. And that never, you know. But if that goes on forever, you know, there's a cost there. But um, anyway, this that's all i got to say about that. Amen. Amen. I think that will we'll leave it, it there. Sorry, guys. All right. We've got to pray it out. Pray it out. Jonathan, you're back on the mic, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Lingerers, man. <laughs> no, okay. Um, Yeah. Lord, thank you so much for, um, thanks so much. You are a good God, and um, God, I just thank you for the new kids we have and um, for the brotherhood we have and all of our brothers and sisters, Lord, everyone that's part of your body, Lord, um, and those that aren't, Lord, just thank you so much for everything you've given us and um Amen. 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 Until next time.